Hosanna, save us, Lord. The words the people shouted on that first Palm Sunday, the words that we echoed, but just a short time ago. It seems like almost just yesterday, but already five weeks ago, we began this Lenten journey with Ash Wednesday. We started out, as we do each year, with the imposition of ashes. As each of you lined up and came forward, I made the sign of the cross upon your forehead with that ash, and I said the same words from Genesis 3.19. From dust you have come, to dust you shall return. How quickly things change, though. It almost seems as we come to the end of this Lenten journey as if, well, Palm Sunday doesn't fit with the rest of the Lenten season. The beginning of the Lenten season, we start with that time of mourning. That is the sign of the ashes, linking back to the Old Testament, when the people would place ashes upon their faces and place sackcloth on their body as a sign of mourning, as a sign of repentance. And as we entered into the Lenten season, we entered with that sign of mourning and repentance, but also that penitential time, knowing the death that is to come. As we come to Palm Sunday today, we cannot help but look and we can't help but notice how beautiful our church is decorated this morning. The joy that even comes through the singing of songs with the words of Hosanna. It seems like it's all too quick. Before we know it, the times are changing. Much like that first Palm Sunday. Things happened very quickly, didn't they? One minute the people were welcoming Jesus in as king. They were welcoming in him as savior. They were joyfully celebrating, placing their palms and their cloaks on the ground. The very next minute he went from savior to sludge. When they realized he was not going to be the one who redeemed them from the Romans, who was not going to establish Jerusalem again as the capital city. When they realized he was not the savior they wanted. My, how their hearts changed. How things change so quickly, don't they? At the blink of the eye. And things haven't changed too much, though, throughout history for us. Things continue to change at a great rate. Technology that we thought was impossible ten years ago, even five years ago, is beyond what we could imagine today. But not just technology, but even how we view life. Think of how things continue to change, how we live, how we speak, how we learn. Think of how things have changed. And think of how we stand as Christians in this ever-changing world. Think about where we stand as Christians, facing these changes that come. Many times we we don't like change. We want to stick with the way things are. Many times we're content to just exist. To just go along each day. We're content to just face tomorrow. We're content to just live as though we're already dying. And perhaps those words that we say on Ash Wednesday, perhaps those ring true in our ears. From from dust you have come, to dust you shall return. But those words aren't words that are intended for us to be disappointed, to spend the year as though we're dying. Those words are intended as motivation for us to realize that our lives are not just one moment, that our lives are not just one time, but our lives are constantly, each thing we do, each way we live, each day that we live, the Lord has opportunity to work through us. The, The way we live in this world, does have an impact. Consider for a moment Christ when He first came. He could have looked at the at Holy Week and said, well, I already know what is going to happen on Monday, Thursday. I know that I'm going to have these trials. I know that on Good Friday that I'm going to be crucified. He could have easily said that and just allowed the temple guard to take Him right then and there. But he chose to have an impact. And not just in Holy Week. He knew his ministry on earth was short. So he lived each day. And look at how he lived each day. He lived each day as uh, having an effect on people. He could have easily said, well, there's no point. 
I'll be going shortly anyway. But he sets that example for us, that each day is important. Each day that we interact with other people, each day that we are living in this world, the Lord has a reason and purpose for it. Now many times, though, we answer that with, well, I am I'm a bit older. I've lived my life. It's someone else's turn now. Have you ever heard that, that saying? Have you ever heard someone say, well, I am no longer useful. I'm too old to do this. Well, when we say that, we basically turn to God and say, you can't use me anymore. Basically, we're just living to die. It's interesting, that difference between living to die and living for the life of Christ. It seems like it would be just a small, even the words are just a little, a few phrases apart. But it's such a big difference in the way we face each day. In the way we look at the world around us. In the way that we approach life. For if we look at it as though we are already dying, then what is the point? What is the point? But when we look at it as Paul looked at it, if we look at it as though each day the Lord can use us, then we'll take each day and we'll look for the way that He will use us. Paul said in Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. Many of us are familiar with that verse. We know what Paul was talking about. We know that the, the, he, the Lord was still using him each and every day. That the Lord had intention. But he also knew that if, if it was the time for the Lord to call him home, that that was okay too. But he was going to make each day count. He was going to go out there. Even after he had gone through several, several beatings, several opportunities of being rejected, even knowing his past history. He still went out, and each day, he had an impact on his world. Now, about eight to ten years ago, there's an author by the name of Rick Warren. He's a pastor at Saddleback, and so many of you are probably familiar with him. That's one of the larger churches in the United States. He wrote a book called The Purpose Driven Life, and while we don't agree with all of the theology in that book, much of the theology in the book, we do agree with his main point, and that is that God has created each of us for a purpose. God has placed us in this time for a purpose. He has placed us in this place for a purpose. There is reason that there are countless churches right here in the Imperial Valley. And that is because the Lord has a purpose for each one of us. Each one of us as his children. Now we choose to ignore his purpose though. When we decide that our lives are no longer useful. When we decide that all we want to do is just go along. Many of us, we know that the Lord has purpose for our lives. But some of us don't know what that purpose is. I admit that there are times when I have when I've gone to the Lord in prayer, not knowing what His purpose was for my life. But that's exactly where He invites us to go. To come to Him in prayer. But not only in prayer, but to look at His Word and Scripture. Now many of us look at it as a 2,000 year old document. But those words that Christ speaks through Scripture, that they transcend all time. That those words speak to us today just as much as they spoke to the people then. And, the, and e although there are parts that are confusing to us, there are parts in the Old Testament that we're not always sure part. There's parts in the New Testament that sometimes we struggle with. When the Lord is speaking through His Scripture, He makes it plain to us. He opens it up to our eyes that we may see His purpose. As long as we are on this earth, the Lord has a purpose for our lives. The Lord has an intention for our lives. No matter how old or how young we are, the Lord is able to use our lives. Have any of you ever felt as though you had no purpose? 
Have any of you ever looked at life and said, God, what am I still doing here? Why am I still on this earth? Why don't you just come again? Have you ever said that? Well, if you have, you would not be alone. But it also shows that need for the Lord to speak in your heart, to speak in your life. Because too often we are content to just assume that we are living to die. We're just waiting for the last day. And like Paul said, it will be gain when we die. But the Lord has not appointed our time yet. Each of you are still here this morning. Each of you are still here for a reason. Now, as I admitted, I don't know what the purpose is for each of your lives. I don't know what the exact reason is, but I do know what God tells us. And that is to love and serve Him. To live this life as His servants. When Christ came, He knew that His time was short. And so He made the best of each day. He knew that we needed a Savior because we would make these excuses. We would put up these things as reasons why we could not, why we could not serve Him. Why we might as well just go on. He knew that we needed salvation. And so He came into this world. He came and He lived a salvation story for each one of us. He didn't just come to this earth and wait for His death. But He had an impact on the people's lives. He cured the sick. He gave sight to the blind. gave voice to the mute even life to the dead. And He gives life to each of us who are dead in our sins. He revives each of us by giving His life on the cross. He didn't make excuse. He didn't give opposition. But as Isaiah says in chapter 53, He was oppressed and afflicted, yet He did not open His mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, And as a sheep before her shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. Christ saw. He saw the need for each of us. He saw the need that we had for a Savior. He saw through through, uh, beyond our excuses and saw our hearts and saw that we needed redemption. And so he went without excuse to the cross. And he did so out of his great love for us. Many times we try to look at that love We try to understand that love, but we never truly can. We look at His love and we try to put it into our modern ideas, but we don't understand that. Even the love of a mother for her son, a father for his daughter, a wife for her husband, a husband for his wife, that love does not compare to God's great love for us. The love that it took to send His only begotten Son to be rejected, to abandon Him, to death on the cross. Out of that great love, though, He gave us life. Out of that great love for us, He gave us redemption so that we might live as His children. Each and every day, each and every day we have opportunity to live for our Lord. To live beyond dying. Now we can't stop our deaths. We can't stop the death of this on this world because death is the punishment for sin. But we can face life knowing that our time is short. Making an impact on each day. And I have a challenge for each of you. And that is to look at life as short. To look at life as an opportunity to serve the Lord. To not ask the question, what usefulness am I? But ask the question, Lord, how will you use me this day? I invite you to look at the reason you're still here and see that, that our loving God, that He still has a plan for you. And even when you don't know His purpose for you, 
that you would come to Him in prayer. That you would look to Him in Scripture. That you would see that path that He has laid out for you. Some days, that path will just be the things we do each day, living our vocation for Him. It may mean being a mother. It may mean being a father. It may mean being a grandparent. It may mean being a grand, a great-grandparent. But the Lord uses each of those things to have an impact. To have an impact in this changing world. In this world that does not change too fast for Him and Him. He uses our lives to share that gospel message to those who are lost. So that they alongside us may say, Hosanna, save us, Lord. So that we may speak that message of truth. That they may know that there is life after this world. That our lives may end in this world in dust. But the world that is to come, because of Christ's death on the cross, that we have life eternal. The Lord, the Lord is active and working in this time. The Lord is active and working in our lives. Put aside the excuses. Put aside the reasons that we have drawn up. And let us live for Christ. And one day, and one day we will die. And we will join Him forever in His righteousness. Hosanna, save us, Lord. Let us pray. Lord God, we do pray that you would be with each each day. We pray that you would grant us strength to overcome the excuses that we make, that we may look forward each day to the lives that you give us. We pray, Lord, that you would ignite in our hearts a spirit that is willing to live for you. Lord, open our eyes and our hearts to see those who are lost, that we may share the gospel message with them. Lord, help us to see that our lives are not just here to go along, to float along, but that you have given us life, that we may have an impact on this world, that we may be a light to those who are lost to sin, shining in the darkness, bringing them that gospel message that we are your children, that we look to the cross, for our life, and for eternal life with you. This we pray in Jesus Christ's precious and holy name. Amen.